Greetings from Dr. Peter McLuhan, your host for another adventure in the life Jesus modeled. Our topic today is extraordinary things. In Luke chapter 5 and verse 17 we read, On one of those days, as he was teaching, the power of the Lord was with him to heal. Luke chapter 5 and verse 17. Jesus healed anywhere at any time, but there were certain days when healing flowed with extraordinary power. This is also true for followers of Jesus. I am always ready to pray for people to be healed, but there are certain times when I have a greater awareness of the presence of the Lord to heal. I believe that today is one of those days. On that day, that Jesus felt the presence of the Lord to heal, we read, there came bringing to him a paralytic carried by four men, Mark chapter 2 and verse 3. The home where Jesus was teaching was filled with people and surrounded by others trying to get closer to Jesus. We read in Mark chapter 2 and verse 2, many were gathered together so that there was no more room not even at the door, and he was preaching the word to them. There's no way that these men could get their friend into the house to ask Jesus to heal him. Luke chapter 5 and verse 19 says, But finding no way to bring him in, they went up on the roof and let him down with his bed through the tiles into the midst before Jesus. What do you think happened next? No one could have predicted what Jesus would say. When Jesus saw the faith of the men who brought the paralyzed man to him, he said, Man, your sins are forgiven. Luke chapter 5 and verse 20. The crowd was stunned into silence. But the silence soon gave way to the grumbling of the religious leaders who were present in the room. They said to each other, Who is this that speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Luke chapter 5 and verse 21. Immediately, Jesus demonstrated his ability to know the thoughts of those objecting to his message by asking a powerful question. Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven? Or to say, rise and walk, Luke chapter 5 and verse 23. It is no wonder that Jesus felt the power of the Lord with him on that day. He needed the power of the Lord upon him to make the boldest statement about his mission on earth to religious, religious leaders that day. He said it as clearly as it could be said, God has given me authority to forgive sins. This is the best news a sinner could ever hear. Jesus has authority to forgive sin. You feel the need to be forgiven. Jesus has the power to forgive you. If you have the courage to ask him to forgive your sins, he has the authority to forgive you. Not only does he have the power to heal, he has the authority and power to forgive. He has the power and authority to heal whatever diseases you have. It is as easy for Jesus to forgive sin as it is for him to heal disease. Religious people saw the crippled man as a hopeless case, punished by God because of some sin he or his parents had committed. Jesus did not see him that way at all. Jesus saw him as someone God loves and someone whom God wants to heal. Jesus went on to address the statement that the religious leaders made. Only God can forgive sin. Now, that is exactly the conclusion that Jesus wanted them to come to. If God gave Jesus the authority to forgive sin then Jesus and God are the same person. Before they could try to answer this question, uh, Jesus said to them, 
but so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sin, he said to the paralyzed man, I say to you, rise, pick up your bed, and go home. Luke chapter 5 and verse 24. The people were stunned by what they had just witnessed. First, because the man needed to be carried by four friends, it is most likely he is, was a quadriplegic. That means he did not have the use of his arms or his legs. They just witnessed a man in that condition get up and walk. If that were not enough, their minds were overwhelmed with the discovery that Jesus has the authority to forgive sin. While this was the first time Jesus said so publicly, it was not the first time people had experienced what it is like to be forgiven. Mary Magdalene knew what it was like to be forgiven. Levi knew what it was like to be forgiven. Zacchaeus discovered what it was like to be forgiven. Mary and Martha knew they had been forgiven. You too can know that you are forgiven. The paralyzed man knew that he and his parents had been forgiven. Luke chapter 5 and verse 25 says, Immediately he rose up before them and picked up what he had been laying on and went home glorifying God. Isn't it interesting to note that whenever people are healed, they give glory to God. And when we pray for people, when I pray for people, they don't give glory to me, they give glory to God who released his power to flow through my life for their healing. Jesus never separated healing and salvation as though they were two separate things. Healing and salvation always belong together. Now, at the end of this extraordinary day, Luke tells us that, Luke chapter 5 and verse 26, amazement seized all of them, and they glorified God, and they were filled with awe, saying, we have seen extraordinary things today. It is an awesome feeling to be healed and to be forgiven. I believe the power of the Lord is present right now to heal paralyzed people. If you are crippled without the use of one or both of your legs, I command strength to return to your legs right now. Right now, someone who has no feeling in their legs is beginning to feel some heat rise up in your leg. Someone is feeling just a mild electrical current flowing in your legs. This is a sign to you that the Lord is present to heal. If there's somebody nearby you, ask them to try to help you to get up right now. If no one is near you, try to get up on your own. If you have a missing limb, I command your limb to grow right now. A knee or a lower leg or feet regrow right now in the name of Jesus. If you are a quadriplegic, I command your arms to regain strength. Pull yourself up and give glory to God. I command your legs and feet to regain strength right now. Give glory to God. If you're moving for the first time in a long time, give glory to God. Somebody just wiggled their toes for the first time in 10 years or more. More is coming to you. Keep wiggling. Keep wiggling your toes. Healing is coming to you. Give glory to God. And thank Jesus for dying for you in your place. Your sins are forgiven and your body is healed. Write and tell me what God has just done for you. Now before we leave this extraordinary story, we should ask a question. What kind of homeowner did not object to having their roof opened and allowed a stranger to come into their space? That's a really good question. And when we read the Gospels very carefully, especially the Gospel of Luke, we discover that this miracle took place in the home of Peter's mother-in-law. This is the same lady who was ill the first time Peter brought her into her home. On that day, her life was changed. She was instantly healed. 
and when we are healed from a potentially terminal disease, possessions no longer seem as important to us as they used to be. On that day, Peter's mother-in-law opened her home to anyone who wanted to meet with the man who had power to forgive sin and to heal disease. If you've been healed today, I invite you to turn your home into a place where people can hear about the power of God to be healed and to be forgiven. Next week, we'll continue studying the life Jesus modeled. Before we leave you, let me just take a few moments and pray with you more about this great message. You know you're a sinner. You feel it every day. And you've thought if you just do enough good things and make enough sacrifices or say enough prayers, somehow you'll be acceptable to God. Jesus came to pay for all of that for you. He has the power to forgive your sin right now. Would you invite Jesus to do that, to forgive you? Say, Jesus, forgive me for my sin. Come into my life. Cleanse me and make me your child. And whatever you're struggling with right now, in the need of healing, we just speak a healing word over you. The power of the Lord is present in this moment to heal. You're paralyzed. I want to pray again for paralyzed people. We've seen four people get out of wheelchairs and walk. Today we'll see more. Get up now and walk in the name of Jesus. I strengthen your arms that have been limp and just laying next to you. Arms move. Just try to move your arm right now. And Jesus is healing you. Thank you, Lord for this blessing of this powerful message and for your powerful presence on this broadcast. Heal people right now in Jesus' name. Next week, we'll continue studying the life Jesus modeled. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk with someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as $1 a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations to Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with living hope.